feel when you hear the words, you must. If you're anything like me, there's this rebellious inner child that wants to scream out, you can't tell me what to do. But today, I'm going to share with you the power that two word phrase has to create freedom. The freedom to release judgments and beliefs and assumptions that lead to prolonged generational patterns. Patterns that we consciously or unconsciously continue. Patterns that we must break because they lead to self-doubt and harm and prejudice toward others. Recently, I had a Zoom conversation with a friend of mine who's experienced job loss. And I could feel her fear and uncertainty and then also the frustration as she was explaining the inequity of opportunities and viewpoints toward Hispanic people as it related to the job hunt. She said that the language that is being used in job applications and conversations is holding people down. She said, someone has to do something. Our words matter. So I asked her, why don't you do something? No, 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 no. And she provided me with a belief that she had about what she could or couldn't influence. But we kept talking and talking. And she started to think, what if, what if that belief that I can't influence change isn't true? What if I can? And she started to get excited and she asked me, do you think that I would be able to make a difference if I could help to educate people on the power of our words and how we can lift people up instead of holding people down? And I got chills. I said, not only can you, but you must. And she radiated energy. I could feel it through the screen. Because when we are lucky enough to hear that urgent inner voice that tells us of how our ideas, our experiences, our unique gifts, can contribute to something bigger than us, it absolutely lights us up inside. And that light, that light is like a beacon of hope to others. And it moves beyond can I or should I into I must. And the reason we don't often try comes down to what we believe we are capable of. Beliefs that may have protected us in the past but it's no longer serving us. Beliefs that may or may not be true, beliefs that may or may not be ours, they may have been handed down to us from our parents or given to us from teachers, coaches, media, peers. But what if, what if we could become more aware of these beliefs and where they came from? What if we could pull them up and out and challenge them and ask, is this true? Is this mine? Is this serving us? And if the answer is no, let it go and create space so that you can consciously choose a more empowering belief. The work that you do to consciously choose your beliefs can reduce generational patterns that hold us back individually and perpetuate bias and ignorance and hatred and violence. Generational patterns come in all forms, just like people. And some of them, some of them are heavy and deep, like the ones I've mentioned. But others, others are light and silly. I remember the first time I had a clue what a generational pattern was, I heard my mother falling out of my mouth. I was folding laundry, the boys were making faces at each other, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, I say, if you keep doing that, your face is going to stay that way. What does that even mean? I had never said it before. I know I've heard it before, but then it just comes out of my mouth. When else has this happened? And I thought about it. We only buy American. Money doesn't grow on trees. That neighborhood isn't safe. 
There just aren't enough hours in the day. I hate birds. Okay, that last one may require a little explaining. You see, when I was growing up, my mother used to talk about how much she hated birds. Now, I don't know if she had a negative interaction with a bird as a child, or maybe she heard it from her mother or her mother's mother. I don't know. But she said it, I ingested it, and then I started saying it. Until one day, I was watching an eagle fly. I was filled with joy and I thought, oh, it's so beautiful. It's like, it's like freedom wrapped in feathers. I love birds. Oh, it doesn't matter whether I love birds or hate birds, but it really mattered that I didn't know which beliefs were mine and which were given to me. And I wondered what else had I received in this parental download without being aware of it? There are things that you do and you say without any thought whatsoever as well, based on your programming, your upbringing, your experiences, the things that you've seen or heard that become etched in your subconscious. And they have a powerful effect on us personally and as a society. Institutionalized sabotaging beliefs are being passed down from generation to generation without any thought whatsoever. Hindsight isn't always 2020, but when you look back at your past, you can see the profound impact it has made on who you are, on how you see the world, on how you show up every day. And I I became obsessed with these beliefs and these patterns. I wanted to do something. I had to figure this out and I talked to experts. I did a lot of research and I came up with something that I'd like to share with you. Now, in a traditional pattern, you have some type of a painful interaction. Maybe you grew up in a home with addiction and there was erratic bursts of anger in the house. And then you make a judgment about that and you say, this authority figure scares me. So authority figures are not to be trusted. And then you react to the world in that way. So when you come in contact with any authority figures, you either pull back or you lash out. And how you show up in the world is reflected back to you. So you may have experienced job loss after job loss. And this cements the belief for you. See? Authority figures are not to be trusted. And then you pass that belief down to your children. And those children don't trust doctors, bosses, police, any authority figure without ever having experienced the initial painful interaction. A generational pattern emerges. It doesn't have to be that way. There's another way that requires just a little bit of help and is very powerful. So you still start with that painful interaction. You still grow up in the home with addiction, you experience erratic bursts of anger, but this time you have a role model who reminds you that that, that may have nothing to do with you and you don't have to allow that to change you. And so you make a conscious choice to not let that define you. And instead, you show up in the world with a responsibility mindset that no matter what goes on around you, you know that you get to choose your thoughts and your feelings and your responses. And you teach that to your children. And that is a very different generational pattern that emerges. Now, there's really only two main differences here, judgment, and choice. In the first pattern, you're judging the situation, the people, maybe their intentions, and then you're just accepting the belief. In the second pattern, you're accepting the situation and the people as they are because you know you cannot change them. And instead, you're judging the belief and you're consciously choosing one that serves you. That's freedom. That's incredibly powerful. 
there's a direct correlation to the work that you do to connect to your inner spirit and the power of your choice and how that opens you to be able to connect to other humans and to foster love and compassion. You may be unaware of the role that your subconscious plays in keeping you from making decisions and instead having you react based on patterns. Well, it's not doing it to harm you. It's doing it to make your life easier so that you don't have to think so much. But is easier always better? Personally, I would rather choose. Now, because these things tend to be a little bit below the surface in our subconscious, we think, well, I can't do anything about it. You hear people all the time say, that's just the way I am. I can't help it. But you can. We can become more aware. We must become conscious. There are clues. There are warning signs. If you do or say something that is judgmental or hurtful toward another person, it doesn't feel right because it's not right. That's a clue. Or if you, if you hear your father or your grandmother or your uncle coming out of your mouth and it's not in alignment with who you are or who you want to be, you want to pull those words back. This is a warning sign. We must become conscious of these so that we can release them and create space. Research indicates that the most successful people have a common thread of being able to look back at their past and be able to learn from their mistakes. Now, not just the action, but the underlying root cause, the fear or the belief and they are able to make a change. These fears and faulty belief systems keep us from being able to make the best decisions, from being able to take the most effective actions. It's like when you're wearing dirty glasses and all you can see is the, the smudge of that failure, the muck of the judgment, the specks of disappointment. The glasses must be cleaned. We must remove the faulty belief system so that we can see clearly and we know the right actions to take. Because I believe that people at their core are good. I believe that we want to do the right things that we want to make and live our best, fullest lives. We want to be able to shine our light for our children and our communities and our workplace. But we're often hindered by these beliefs and these patterns. I tell you that you, you must make a change. And if you, like me, hate to be told what to do, Consider this, the world is in need of a change. If everyone becomes aware of and takes responsibility for their beliefs and their choices and their behaviors, that change is possible. And these individual changes, they can help to break negative generational patterns and they can be replaced with more empowering ones. We could replace bias with love, violence with peace. What if, what if you knew that the work that you're doing to improve your own life could have a major impact on the world? Not only can you, but you must.